thread. This stuff may be the most confusing thing about fly tying. So let's fix that. So I thought I would have a theme for this video. Every once in a while I'll put a question on Instagram about what would you guys like to see on the tying tips videos. And a while back I got an answer that was thread. It was from a gal named Shaylee. Um, Shaylee seems super cool. She's really into tying. She was fairly new back then. She actually ties great flies now. But I thought, okay, cool. We're going to do that. So let's keep the theme of women in fly fishing, fly tying kind of going. And let's open some packages from artists that are women. Got a new knife. In case you were wondering, it's a Boker Stubby Strike. It's pretty cool. It's got a D2 blade and an aluminum handle. Um, <laughs> look at me pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Literally, the only thing I know about knives is what I've watched on Forged in Fire. <laughs> and my wife likes it more than I do. <laughs> I don't know. So I know what's in this first package. I ordered it. So another friend of mine knows this artist that um, she shared on Instagram, of course. And, uh, and it was the coolest design. You see, I'm a fan of like super clean designs. Just a, just a straight up design. I, I love shirts like that. Yes. This shirt's from Amy Sherman. She's out of Colorado, I believe. Uh, you can find her on Instagram. It's Amy Illustrations. Seems like a really cool outdoors woman. Um, fisherman, hunter. Mm. If that trick is worn out, it's welcome. My apologies. So this other package. I, um... Uh, I don't know exactly what's in it, I have a pretty good idea, and um, I'm crazy excited about it. Uh, this gal is, her name's, she goes by Jacqueline Stella, um, she's Jackie Watercolor Art on Instagram. But it looks like she's going to do a collaboration with Sims in 2021, so you're going to see some of her stuff on Sims shirts. Oh my goodness. Ah. So she sent some stickers. I'm gonna let you go to Instagram and and check out her work. Do this for sure. Um, and I hate to be a guy about this, but this girl is drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> Fantastic watercolor artist. Beautiful, beautiful work. She's been on a kick lately of, of painting flies. And she's done nymphs, and she's done dry flies, and she's done some streamers. And... So, I'm gonna get that framed ASAP. But, uh, I'll put links to the shirt and Amy's stuff, and also Jackie's paintings and everything like that, in the description of this video. Go check them out. Seriously, you'll be glad you did. So with thread, there are really three different kinds of thread that that I can really think of that are that are used in any kind of numbers whenever you're talking about fly tying. You have mono, gel spun, and nylon. And we're going to go from the least used to the most used. So we're probably going to start with mono. Whenever you first think of mono, it's kind of like tippet. You, you think of tippet, right? I mean, you're not wrong, but you're not exactly right. It, it's it's not exactly the same thing. The thread we use, the 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 thread, the mono thread that we use is is a little different than mono. It has a little bit different um, characteristics. It doesn't exactly bend exactly the same. It's it's just it it's just not the same. So some of the advantages of mono, it's pretty strong. 
I mean, whenever you're talking like monofilament, you're talking like pound test, you know? So, yeah, it, the brake strength of mono is a lot. Another advantage is it's see-through, almost totally see-through. And this is where I think it sets itself apart than all the other threads. So you have the ability to wrap material on a hook with a see-through thread so you can get the color that comes through. But if you have a multi-colored fly and you're wrapping the body on it over it to tighten it down, that color is going to come through the thread itself. No other thread has the ability to do that. Now some disadvantages, it's slick. It's it's slick to, to hold stuff with. Um, it's just kind of funky to get used to. We don't tie with thread that's usually perfectly round and it's rigid and t kind of tough to get used to. It's, it's just, it's just different. So if you want to whip finish a smooth, nice, pretty head and you try to do it with mono, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So moving on to gel spun. Gel spun thread is, is really cool, and I know a lot of people are really tying a lot of flies with this. So most of the time when you're talking the size of gel spun thread, this is a 130. That's how many strands are in this. So the smaller that number is, the smaller around or the least number of strands are in it. The bigger that number is, the more strands are in it, making it bigger. This is 200. 200 strands, you get it. The sizing of all these threads, the aughts, the deniers, and, and, and all that stuff, I'm gonna cover more on the nylon side of things. It kinda goes with the gel spun as well, but it depends on the manufacturer and, and all this stuff. The first thing that most people think of when they think of gel spun thread is probably like deer hair, like spinning, uh, stacking deer hair, anything to do with really using a lot of thread pressure. Because there's one thing this stuff is known for and it's the strongest thread on the market. Oh, it broke the hook. <laughs> now some other good things that can be used for, I, like, I know people that tie exclusively with gel spun, exclusively. So if you get used to it, it's not only for deer hair bugs or, you know, big bugs and stuff like that. It's waterproof. So immediately my mind goes to anything that wants to float, like a dry fly. It's a waterproof thread. It's not going to soak up water. So dry flies are another possibility with gel spun. Okay, so some disadvantages of gel spun. It's slick. Like it's, it's slick. It wants to slide a little bit. Uh, it, that kind of stuff. Um, there's always ways around all that, and if you just keep constant thread pressure, it's it's a non-issue. But it's slicker than nylon. That, another disadvantage is there's there are very few colors that this comes in. It's really basically kind of white and black. There is no stretch with gel spun thread, and this is where I end up having the biggest problem with it. I I. I rely on stretch to know how strong my wraps are. So in the tying videos, you'll see me wrap, 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 and stretch. So when I wrap and stretch, and I take that thread right to its breaking point, I know that it is as strong as it can possibly be. And you don't have that with gel spun. So if you like to stretch your thread to tighten and know that you're good to go, you might battle gel spun just a little bit, but if you're gonna tie deer hair bugs, if you're gonna flare deer hair in any way at all, get gel spun. Just trust me. Okay, so for nylon. Nylon is the thread that you typically think of whenever you think of fly tying thread. If you've ever tied flies, I'll venture to say that you've tied with nylon. It's the thread that goes from super small to super thick. Yeah, everybody, everybody's used it. Everybody's used it. First of all, some advantages of nylon. It comes in tons of colors. It, like every color you can think of, nylon will be made in. Nylon has stretch. Like I alluded to before in the gel spun, um, I rely on stretch a lot. Stretch is my feel. That's where I know my happy place. But if you've watched this video very much, you've also seen me break nylon 
and probably cuss a little bit. Another advantage with some nylon, you can spin it to make it cord up, or you can spin it to make it totally flat. So you have flat thread and corded thread on the same spool of thread. You see me do this a lot with like a 210 Danvilles whenever I'm tying streamers because if you spin it to where it cords up, you get really strong thread that is gonna wrap in the exact spot you want it to wrap in. One of the disadvantages, which could be kind of an advantage too, it kind of depends on how you look at it. The stronger the thread is, the thicker it is, period. So you can have really tiny thread that is not strong at all, but you'll be able to tie tiny little flies with it. And then you'll have big thread that's super strong that you can tie big flies with. So let's jump into the sizing of nylon thread. So there are really two ways to tell the size of your fly tying thread. Ots, that's the slash zero thing, and denier. So if you're talking ought, the smaller the number, the larger the thread. So this 10 ought is smaller than this 8 ought. So in aughts, the larger the number, the smaller the diameter. In denier, the larger the number, the larger it is. This is clear as mud. So in all seriousness, my way around all of this was to find a certain thread that I liked and to stick with that thread. That way you know what size you're getting. You don't have any guessing game, 16 aught, 70 denier, 3 aught, 400 denier. Find a manufacturer that you like, stick with it, and it makes it so much easier. I feel like this video has been a show. My apologies, I'll try to do better.